So, after a thrilling round of 16 and quarterfinals, the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar semi-finals are set and the Dark Horse Morocco, they want to keep their surprising run alive after upsetting Spain and Portugal. Germany's performance was also short-lived, eliminated in the group stage for the second consecutive World Cup. Belgium and the Uruguay also crashed out in this group stage, while Brazil, who many believed it was their time to lift this coveted trophy, also lost to Croatia. So, of the four teams remaining, we believe that France and Argentina are clear favourites, but Croatia is also looking for revenge against France after losing the finals in the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. Now, we at Soccer 876 are going to just quickly take a look at the four teams that are left in the semi-final stages of this tournament. But before we get into that guys, if you are new to this channel, please remember to subscribe, leave a like on this video, comment which team is your team from this World Cup and who you think will be the two person, the two teams in the finals after this semi-final stage. Let me know what you think. So we are now just quickly just going to get into the four teams that have made it through to the semi-final stages. Argentina arrives as the second favorite with Lionel Messi as its great leader. After, and after eight years, they, they too are looking for revenge for losing um, to Germany in the final of the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Um, under coach Leonel Scaloni, Argentina arrives as the reigning champions of the Copa America and with one single defeat in 41 matches. That's an undefeated streak of 36 games and it was surprisingly snapped by the Saudi Arabian team at the beginning of the tournament, which made Argentina seem like they were destined to be out of the tournament. However, Argentina is hoping to win the title for Messi, who is probably participating in his last World Cup of his career. Like France, if Argentina can lift the trophy in the end, they would become the fourth team to win at least three World Cups. Maybe it's nothing more or less than fate, but this is almost certainly Lionel Messi's last shot at winning a World Cup, and he has dragged Argentina to this stage with his brilliance and force of personality. He isn't the player he was in his prime, we all know that, with his electric um, burst of pace, but at the age of 35, he has shown that he is still capable of making crucial a crucial difference in matches Messi though will have to find something magical to overcome a Croatian team that manages football tournaments better than most the 2018 World Cup finalists are a tough pro team with Modric as an influential uh, just as influential as Messi but they does feel a sense of um, destiny about the Argentines this time around. However, if you should take Messi out of the team, Argentina are a very limited side. For, and for a country that has produced um, some incredible players, there is a real shortage of world-class support this time around for Messi. And Argentina's lack of pace and creativity really hasn't been a major issue so far, but as a tournament approaches this decisive stage the key details matter and they will need to find some extra extra to beat croatia this croatian team scaloni's team need to find a way to stop madrid dominating the game with his movement of the ball in midfield but at the same time it's a challenge for all the croatian um, opponents and very few are able to pull off this this game will really come down to whether Argentina can stop Modric, but also how they can um, threaten Croatia in ways that doesn't really involve Messi. In their brief World Cup history dating from France 1998 to, um, to date, Croatia has played in two semi-finals. Their debut in the, in the tournament saw them finish in third place 
while in the most recent edition they were the big surprise to reach the final. On the other hand, Croatia has been left out though of the group stage in three World Cups in Korea and Japan in 2002, in Germany in 2006, and Brazil in 2014. And also in 2010, they did not even qualify to participate in the World Cup in South Africa. But um, coach, their coach, um, their coach, I don't remember his name, coach Zlatko Dalic, something like that. He spoke a lot after the match, um, after the quarterfinal victory over the Brazilian teams. He spoke, um, he spoke about their fighting spirit. And even though it's not something you can quantify with statistics or data, it will be the, that one main thing that worries Argentina the most. Croatia have a fantastic ability to stay in a game. Their midfield three of Luka Madrid, Matteo Kovacic, and Marcelo Brozovic, they have technical. They have the technical ability on the ball to control um, large spells, and when they must defend, they are dodged and organized. Argentina, with even Lionel Messi, will find it very hard to break them down and. The longer the game stays even, Croatia will only grow in belief. Eight of their nine past knockout matches at major tournaments have gone to extra time, beating um, both Japan and Brazil on penalties during their run in this current World Cup in Qatar. They also won shootouts against the likes of Denmark and Russia on their way to the finals in 2020, um, 2018. Croatia will hope to disrupt Argentina and Messi long enough for panic to set in and then look to take advantage. Their record at the past two World Cups suggests that it's a well-known formulated plan. The most obvious reason for Argentina reaching the final over Croatia is that, simply put, they are better players. There is a reason Argentina and Messi arrived in the World Cup in Qatar aiming to lift the the trophy while croatia arrived with madrid um just hoping to get through that group stages it's based on expectations purely based on the depth of talent that each coach has at his disposal many believe that france's injuries would mean their chances were limited without the likes of their star players like Karim Benzema, Paul Pogba, N'Golo Kante, um, Mike Megan and, and the likes of like Christopher Nkunku, it seemed like everything was crumbling for France. But Kylian Mbappe and Oliver Juru, they have placed France just two games away from winning the World Cup um, in back-to-back -back occasions. They have dominated the World Soccer at the national um, level and are looking to win their third World Cup which will place them amongst the winningest countries as we they will call it. France showed um, against England that they have all the resilience, the ruthlessness and the mental strength. It would be very different against Morocco but they have everything needed to beat them. The French have been there before. They use they are used to playing these big games, unlike the Moroccans. The current world champions have the experience and the know-how in these kinds of games when the pressure is high. They are also fit, despite the injuries and the players that were left out. They really have no injury worries with the team that they have now, unlike the Moroccans. No fatigue, no suspensions, no players missing either. They are now um, full of confidence and the momentum is actually in their favor right now after the way they beat England in the quarterfinals. However, it, wouldn't, it won't be so easy because while it is well known that this French team can be very great, they can get carried away and arrogant at times. And there is a risk that they could take this game a bit lightly and again get surprised by a dangerous Moroccan side. We saw it against um, the likes of Tunisia, albeit it was with a B team, but it could happen again. And apart from um, the likes of like Coman and, and stuff and players like that, 
Didi Deschamps really doesn't have a world class option off the bench. You know, people who are strong and um, who have world class talent. He has very good forwards, might I add, you know, but they are not world class. They have they are not world class and they are not really ones who can realistically um change a game. They are not they they are they are not known for that right now. They are, they don't reach that. So what I'm saying that is the lack of depth. Depth could be an issue for the French team if they cannot break the deadlock of the Moroccans way down in this match. Morocco's team is the greatest surprise of this World Cup so far and perhaps of all other World Cups ever. They are the first African team in World Cup history to reach the semi-finals. Morocco also became just the third country ever that plays outside of UEFA or Camerbol to reach the semi the semi-final stages of a World Cup with only United States in the in 1930 and Korea in 2002. So no team has the same momentum, no team has as much support locally and globally as these potential history makers. This isn't just the first African nation to reach the semi-final. It is also the first Arab nation and only the second Muslim nation. In a sport that has traditionally been close between um, the Europeans and the South Americans, much of the rest of the world is always just there to cheer them on. So they are not just here playing for themselves, they are here playing for nations that that don't even have a chance to make it to this World Cup. They also match up very well with France in terms of statity, in terms of statistics. They conceded just one goal all mm -hmm. tournament and that in itself was also an own goal. They have shown the ability to defend stoutly and concede very little space behind. So for the likes of Kylian Mbappé to run into, it will be very hard. They have the World Cup outstanding keeper thus far. Their midfielders are on fire in terms of quantity and quality. They have wingers in the likes of um, Sofiane Bufal and Hakim Ziyech who can invent something um, out of nothing and get you a goal, which is often all it takes for you to be successful in these stages of the competition. Most of all, they are gritty, they are hungry. You'd back them, you'd back them in a street fight. And, and let's face it, this knockout um, football, the games are tight and it's so often about intensity and mental toughness. Now, who do you think has more in that department? Morocco or France who needed Hurricane to blast a penalty over the bar and some slightly dubious calls to get past England? When you look at the way um, France were outplayed for much of the game, you can ask yourself who really is more focused here? That's right, Morocco. But let's live in the real world here for a minute. France are the reigning world champions for a reason. They can throw up a stinker against England and still win. And the likes of Morocco's first choice back four are physically hurting right now. Akraf Hakim is battling, is battle scarred and, and, and hurting. Roman Saiz played um, through an injury um, against Portugal and had to come off. He may grit his teeth and play, but he's held together by masking tapes and adrenaline right now. Naive Aguerd, the other outstanding um, centre back, he missed Portugal game as did Nasir um, Maro Mazroy because I can't really pronounce this guy's name Hi. so he's the other um, he's one of the fullbacks that are, um, that are unlikely to feature and I'm sure both of them would really give a kidney just to be there but what's more is that Francis boss Didier Deschamps has no qualms about shutting up shop if he needs to he won the last World Cup playing essentially a counter-attacking style of football. This time though, France have been a little bit more expansive. 
but fundamentally they have so many one-on-one -on -one threats all over that a goal can come at any time from anywhere and on set pieces Oliver Juru which is France's all-time leading goal scorer now who backed the winner against England plus the enormous Deot Upperman um, Campo or whatever his name is he's they are serious threats in the air so there are a ton of ways in which France can win this game so for Morocco though the part is far narrow on paper and it's very too narrow I think to squeeze through my prediction for the semi-final rounds I really um, think France will get the better of of, um, of Morocco and I think Argentina will get the better of Croatia in this one so I'm predicting a Argentina France final for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar so let's see how it goes from there when that day comes we'll get back to it so I'm out now for this one guys so before we go just remember like this video share it with somebody let's see if all the predictions that we made so far let's go back to them and see which one of our predictions failed us miserably and just leave a comment of, and which team failed us very much in this tournament so let's see you in another one guys and this is ryan for soccer 876 saying like football is life